What's up everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a 2.5D parallax type of moving still photo using a mix of Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's start our project in Adobe Photoshop and this is going to work best with photos with a pretty clear foreground subject that we can cut out of a background that's pretty simple, not too cluttered and crazy. So I'm going to grab my quick selection tool and create a selection. This should work pretty well depending on most photos. There's many different ways to select things. If you need to get more particular, you can use things like the magnetic or polygonal lasso tool or the pen tool or other channels and masking methods. But the quick selection tool should work fine in this and many cases. I'm working on add to selection mode and you can adjust the brush size however you want. But working on add to selection mode, I can go back after I create the bulk of my selection and pick up little pieces like the end of the microphone or this little bit of his shirt that didn't get picked up. And once I have a clean selection, there's also a couple other things I can do. I can go to select, modify, and expand a couple. So let's expand it like five pixels. And I can also go to select, modify, smooth, maybe smooth it a tiny bit. And once I have a decent selection, I'm going to right click and layer via copy. So now I have the solid cutout on its own layer. It looks pretty clean to me. Next, I want to clean up this background and kind of remove him from it. So I'm going to press command and click on the thumbnail of this layer with the cutout to reactivate that selection. And then on the background layer, I'm going to go to select, modify, expand, and expand this like 25 pixels just so it really gives us a working area around our subject. I'm even going to go to select modify feather and feather it maybe about five or 10 pixels and then right click and fill with content aware fill. So this will allow Photoshop to take a look at what's going on around in the background and try to erase whatever's going on in our selection with content aware. So it's not going to be perfect. Obviously, it looks a little smudgy here, a little weird. But overall, it's pretty clean. And when we put our original layer back on top, you really can't see what's happened. If you do need to clean up some problem areas, you can always try with a slightly different selection or get in there by hand and use the clone stamp tool by sampling a specific area. So I can increase the brush size, hold option, sample this area right here, and brush it in. And you can kind of work by hand if you really want to clean up some smudgy areas. But remember, the majority of this is still going to be covered up by your original subject. So I think we've got a pretty good start here. Now, at this point, I could add whatever other text or graphics I wanted if I wanted to do something else. So this could go between the two. So that's also a way that you can put text behind objects. But we've basically got our puzzle pieces separated and on their own layers for us to animate. Now, Photoshop does have an animation timeline and video capabilities, but to be honest, I never really enjoy working with it. It's a bit clunky. It's a bit odd to work with. So what I'm actually going to do is save this as a PSD on my desktop, press OK, and now I want to switch over to Adobe Premiere Pro. So opening up Premiere Pro, you can actually import and use Photoshop documents or PSDs in your Premiere Pro projects. So when I go to click and import that PSD that we just created, it's gonna ask me, do I wanna merge them all as one layer or I can choose individual layers. So I'm gonna choose individual layers and when I press okay, that'll create a new bin with everything that was in that PSD and we have our different layers, each as a different object that we can work with. So I'm gonna click and drag the background layer on. It'll, cre it'll create a new sequence exactly the size of that but if you wanted to create your own sequence first, you could do that with file new sequence if you wanted a specific size. I'm just using the size of the photo. And I'm also gonna drag in the subject or the, the artist here. And now we have the two on their own layers. So it's super easy to animate with keyframes in Premiere Pro, which is why I switched over. And we can just choose however long we want this to be. So right now it's five seconds and that's fine with me, but if you wanted to extend them, you could. But let's go on our first layer and let's click the stopwatch icon on the scale and let's start at 100 but go all the way up to let's say 108 so if i watch what's going on here 
he slowly and gradually increases in scale. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the background, but opposite. So I'm going to start at 108 and add a keyframe at the very beginning and go to the end and reset back to 100. So now we have the background getting smaller while the foreground is getting larger and it creates this vertigo kind of 3D, 2.5D, whatever you want to call it, parallax still photo effect and add some life and movement into the effect. And that's just the very standard basic animation you can do, but you could play around with all different types of animations now that you've separated the two into their own layers. You know, I could move him from left to right and have the background kind of going from right to left a little bit. I could add text in between the two and add different layers that go on in between the two. Check out what happens when I add a little bit of a glitch effect, for example, just on the foreground, but not the background. So there's a ton of cool ways that you can use this. Hopefully this gave you some ideas and showed you that you can cut things up in Photoshop where it's super easy rather than in Premiere and then take them into Premiere where it's much easier to animate in rather than Photoshop. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to stay tuned for all of my new videos. Share your results with me on Instagram and just go follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho if you're not yet. It's the best place to keep in touch and reach out with me. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.